Champagne gang, Fizz fam, confidant. <laughs> Welcome to the crossover edition where X-Files Exposed meets Wellness Waves Wednesday. Yes. Since we're discussing managing your ship this week, relationships, boo things, why not do a mashup, mix up, and combine the two to help you understand how to navigate these waters. So we're going to start with our X-Files and finish up with Wellness Waves Wednesdays where we'll be discussing managing your ship and showing you how to navigate the water of relationship so for our first story baby make sure your glasses are filled to the rim (laughs) because you're gonna need it this story time comes from tiktok where this woman talks about being in a marriage with a spearfisher down low for seven years (laughs) you heard me seven that's 84 months 2,556 days, 61,344 hours, 3,680,640 minutes, 220,838,400 seconds. Long time. So buckle up and let's get scandalous. Okay, uh, so do my makeup with me while I give y'all a story time about how I was in a seven-year relationship with a very suspect and questionable man. And the only reason I'm saying suspect and questionable is because I did not have definitive proof, like catching him in the act or um, seeing pictures or anything to say this man is full-on gay. But once I get to the story time, y'all gonna be like, bitch, (laughs) like, disclaimer, I'm not outing anybody. I'm gonna be using fake names. Um, it's not the fact that it's the sexuality part. It's the down low, hiding, being manipulative, breaking hearts, cheating. That's the, the bigger moral of the story. Be who you want to be. There's no homophobia here. But be who you want to be and stand on that. Okay? Let's get it. All right. So let's call my ex, Ronnie. We're going to call him Ronnie. Um, Ronnie and I, we had a lot of mutual friends. And that's just kind of how we met. Just in passing. You know, like, you know how you have friends and then the guy has friends and their friends are friends but we're not friends mutuals duh that's what i call mutuals so this particular time that i seen him was at six flags he was with his best friend keep that in mind because he's going to be a huge part of the story and i was with my two homegirls so it was a little bit more intimate than it usually is with all of our friends around so i was able just to get a better look at him and just a better all vibe of who he was because it wasn't so much noise and so much people and the vibe was cool he was very calm very collective um very mature from what i was seeing and he was very attractive for some reason i guess everything was just chaotic any other time i seen him but i was able to see him in the light of day it was not so much going on and i was like oh my god he's very attractive and I, and I fucked with it a little bit, right? So when we got home, we spoke to each other on Facebook. Like, oh, it was nice seeing you. Um, nice getting to know you. Just that and third, blah, 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 blah. And from that point on, we never stopped speaking. Like, we just never stopped talking. Every day, it was a good morning. How's your day going? This is how, you know, this is what I did today, blah, 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 blah. So fast forward, that was in like August. Fast forward to January. Um... He gave me this really, really beautiful long paragraph for my birthday. And I just thought that was really, really cute. Like, this was a guy, he was very consistent. Um, From that point, from Six Flags, we probably, the most we went without speaking to each other was probably like a day. So I was like, yeah, I, I dig him. And then he finally asked me on a date, you know. He said he started a new job and his time was a little bit free. Um, and then he stopped going to school. So he stopped um, going to college. He was going to a college that was a little further from where we stay at. So when he asked me on a date, he asked me out to the movies. And um, he paid for the tickets. He kept in touch with me the whole time, up leading up to me getting there on like, you know, what kind of snacks do I like to eat? What the snacks? And like, it's just like very, very, very attentive. And that's what I really, really liked about him. 
And like I said, I was very young, so it didn't take much <laughs> to impress me, um, so to say. And that was just already like more than I've ever like experienced, um, just him doing that much for me. And I really was vibing with him. It was really, really cool. Fast forward a little bit, we continue um, speaking, dating. Um, he keeps asking me on dates and he's, he's paying for the dates. So, and like I told you, I was very young. So him having like a stable job, him being in college, everything was very, um, very new to me. I'm thinking this man is doing it and he was doing it, honey. Okay. So yeah, like I said, he was doing his thing. Like I had no complaints, no nothing. So the more I got to know him, the, I guess the more comfortable he started to become. And with that comfortability were, I wouldn't say they were red flags, but it was, it was certain things that I just kind of wasn't used to and it would be his constant need for approval from this best friend that I told you earlier about like it would be kind of before he ever bought something he had to check in with his friend and I'm just like but I already like he would come to me and I said yeah like that's cool I like that but it had to be like this best friend I could say yeah that's a go do that do that or wear that or buy that or uh, you know any Thing, but until that best friend said yay or nay it wasn't moving like that best friend had to give it the opinion if he couldn't reach that best friend in time he would wait to do whatever or buy whatever or you know until that best friend gave his opinion on what to do and that was very peculiar to me but like i said i was young it wasn't right just step around blah, 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 blah. okay so like i got started from january um we going on consistent dates in april he asks me to be his girlfriend and make it official so now we're official and mind you i didn't really disclose to my close close friends or my family members that i was getting serious with this particular person because I've been known to do that, to kind of like jump the gun and want to tell my family and friends about this guy and then things go left. And I'm just like, yeah, okay. It's another one bites the dust. So I just wanted to just have something for me, see exactly where I was going, how serious this person was and see exactly what it would turn into before I told anybody. Now we're official. I'm telling my friends and I'm telling my family. He meets my sister first. After meeting my sister, he goes home. I head over to my sister's house. My sister says, Jada, that man is gay. I said, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, wait, wait, wait. Okay. So my sister says that and I'm like, I'm half taken aback because that was really left field because from their interaction, it seemed like everything was going really good and they was laughing at each other's jokes or whatever, or whatever the case may be. And then right after, like, she was like, yeah, that's what it is. And because I already had those underlying feelings, I just couldn't pinpoint exactly what it is in like regards to the best friend and that dynamic being a little weird to me. When she said it, it was just kind of like, ah, that's what I've been feeling. Okay. But I was still very much in denial. In this whole story, I am not, I'm not delusional right now. I was delusional back then, but right now I'm not going to be delusional about being delusional back then. Like I was stupid. I was young and dumb guys. So please don't come for me in the comments. Okay. So I kind of just chalk it up to my sister that he was raised around a lot of his sisters and that could be that influence. She lets it go. I let it go and we continue on. Now, I met the best friend, questionable. Here comes another male friend that he's very cool with. Let's call him Johnny. So my ex is Ronnie. This other friend that I'm just meeting is Johnny. Now, I already knew Johnny from in passing, kind of around the same neighborhood, got a lot of mutual friends. When I got with my ex, he was very opinionated about our relationship and publicly on social media, kind of always if, you know, when you're young, you make cute little status, um, statuses um, on each other's stuff. And he would always, always be under both of our stuffs, just commenting something weird like, oh, that's gay or, or yeah, y'all need to get a room. Like it was just very like, like oh this is lame like he just always was commenting every status almost every status he would comment something that was a little off-putting to me so i told him um my ex ronnie about it and he was just more so on oh that's just johnny being johnny that's just bro da -da 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 -da. that's gonna be a consistent theme so pay attention to that too 
So this one is about to cut off. But if y'all want part two, you know what to do. Okay. Okay. Um, he paid for the tickets. So part two of how I was in a seven year relationship with a very suspect and questionable man. Let's get it. So like I said, Johnny comes around. Um, Johnny is way too opinionated on our relationship negatively. And now my family has um, my ex Ronnie on social media. So they're now starting to see what I've been seeing and how strongly opinionated negatively Johnny is on me and my ex's relationship. They're like, whoa, red flags on the play. Who is this? Like, who is this guy? I bring it to my ex attention. Again, like you have my family now on social media. It's getting embarrassing. It's getting very weird. And I honestly think that your friend likes you. And I said that to him straight out. He does this. What? What are you talking about? What are you like? What? Where was this coming from? Like he does that. It's not like a. It's it. It comes off like it's not the biggest shock to him. Like whoa, what? Where did that come from? It was just almost like he's just downplaying what I'm saying. If you catch my drift, we make up, we stop arguing about it. Fast forward, we're now um, hanging out. We're going out. One of his friends has a baby shower. We go to the baby shower. Johnny's there. After the baby shower, because it ends very dramatically, after the baby shower, we plan on going somewhere else. Now, me and my ex are in the back, and Johnny and some of the other friends are in the front. Now, I see that the other friends are kind of walking a little bit up, um, in front of Johnny. So it's a group of the friends, Johnny by himself, and then me and my ex right behind Johnny. I see my ex starting to pick up his pace a little bit to kind of meet Johnny where he's at and leave me in the back. Now, mind you, this is mid-conversation I'm having with my ex. And I'm seeing him pick up his pace so that he could just meet Johnny. Then it goes to him kind of like saying, oh, I got to meet Johnny here, there, there, this, then, the third. He needs help with this. He needs help with that. Like it went from him being super, super close to the best friend to being super, super close with Johnny. Now it got to the point where I overheard a conversation that my ex and the best friend was having over Johnny and how the best friend feels like, yeah, what's, what's going on with that, bro? Like, like you act like you don't know niggas no more. Like just kind of like having a lover squirrel quarrel however you say it but using kind of just like hood nigga lingo and it felt like two people in a relationship having an argument about who's this person that you're getting close to so it was that then it was now he's spending days at Johnny's house the maximum time like three days straight and because they worked together um, in an entrepreneurial field and did the same thing he would use that as an excuse like oh we gotta lock in me and bro we just gotta lock in to stand the third and I'm just like okay me being young and wanting to be the supportive girlfriend and and not really understanding that field very well i'm just kind of thinking that's just something that they have to do and just lock in so now it went from us not really arguing things being really blissful to us having the weirdest arguments about male friends never like never has it been about a girl or a girl commenting under his statuses or um I, i've smelled perfume when you're clothes or you got lipstick on your car it has never it's never those arguments have never happened in the entire seven years i've been with this person it has been majority surrounding men and how the relationships with him and the men male friends or co-workers or business partners that he has is very strange to me okay so at this point i think that now he gets the hint that i'm not gonna stop bringing it up if i see something weird that's going on with him and his friends i'm gonna bring it to his attention so he kind of falls back from johnny and the best friend a little bit and at that point he is giving me um undivided attention again and being very attentive like he was in the beginning but out of nowhere he gets really distant he starts to kind of reclude a little bit and being very defensive over anything or anytime i want to get like a little close to his phone or or just kind of like you and your phone a lot like what are you doing and say those um type of questions he gets really really fidgety okay so i'm gonna fast forward a little bit because this is when she's just gonna get real this is gonna get real guys okay so he comes to my house um one day he's visibly upset and um he says that his friend we're gonna call this friend a um a was talking to this girl on my ex's ronnie's snapchat and the girl thinks it was my ex 
Ronnie that she was talking to when she was really talking to his friend A and now is trying to confront me about all the naked pictures and videos and messages that my ex was sending her, but it really wasn't him. It was the friend A on my ex's Snapchat. I know I'm gonna get crucified for this one right here, but I'm listening to what he's saying and I said, okay, do you have this person's number? This girl's number, girl's number. And he's like, yeah, he gives, he gives them to me. I call the girl. And I'm cursing, I'm yelling, I'm screaming like, who the fuck you think, da 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 my, uh, my man already told you that was not him, this, that, and the third. And this person is on the other line like, you're so delusional. They just keep saying, you're so delusional. You're so delusional. It's so sad. Like, it's so sad how women um, like you don't have any self-esteem. You're so sad. And mind you, I'm hearing this person say this, but I'm still arguing, taking up for my man. He's right there. Okay. So now I say get the, the, the friend A on the line. So I'm talking to A. And mind you, I'm yelling and screaming at A now. Like, oh, it was too hard for you to make your own Snapchat. Now you got my man into X, Y, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. And the, the friend A is just like, I'm sorry, sis. You know, another happened again. Yeah, she's crazy. Don't mind her. Blah, 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 blah. So now I get my sister involved because my sister is top one. Top, top tier. Going to figure it out. Like, FBI got nothing on my sister. So, I'm calling my sister, giving my sister a number, telling my sister, like, this is what it is. This, like, like what we got to do? Because I'm pissed at this point. My sister talks to this person on the phone, calls me back in, like, literally five minutes and says to me, now, mind you, my ex, Ronnie, is on the phone with his friend, A, that supposedly got him in all of this mess. I'm next to my ex. And um, I put my sister on speakerphone. My sister says, Jada, that is a tranny on the phone. I'm like, I am floored at this point. My sister says it as calm as that, Jada, that is a tranny on the phone. Cause mind you, like this is something my sister has been questioning about him. And then question it a little bit more with the friend Johnny and how opinionated he was in our relationship. And now this. So my sister is just kind of saying it like, girl, I've been saying this to you. Like, this is a training on the phone. Just to kind of, like, girl, like, what we what we doing here? So now the friend A is overhearing this, all of this. Because I put my sister on speakerphone. And he's hearing this. And he's like, oh, nah, that can't be, that can't be right. No, no, no. Fast forward a little bit. I kept asking my ex, who is this person? What's really going on? Because me and my sister are about to go up and meet with this person. Because this person was willing to meet. Like, this person wanted to tell the tea and didn't have a problem. Like, where you want to meet at? Because I'm going to tell you what's really going on with your supposed man. Once I said that, my ex says, no, it wasn't a, that was story was a lie. I was really talking to this person, but I did not know it was, um, a trend uh transgender and they catfished me i never did nothing with them so forth and so on what they never met up they were supposed to my ex backed out so forth and that kind of coincided with the story the the this person was telling me the only thing was that was different my ex was saying he was catfished and this person said no he knew exactly what i was and what I was into. Stay tuned for part three. Okay, part three of how I was in a seven year relationship with a very questionable and suspect man. Okay, so now I got to that realization from this person um, that no, he knows exactly what I am and what we were gonna do. Like, I didn't hide it. He was not catfish. Sorry, guys. It's, ooh, ooh, it's raining. This is how real it's getting, y'all, okay? And just to rewind a little bit, this person went to extreme lengths to expose my ex as if they were in some type of relation and my ex was trying to play with this person. Like, it was deeper than just, oh, we was talking a few times on a, on social media and we was going to get into something. No, this person found my sister's Facebook, my mother's Facebook, my Facebook, some of my friends, and proceeded to send all of them his explicit videos of him releasing himself, um, penis pictures, uh, messages. He sent that 
this person, sorry, this person sent that to my mom. My mom's Facebook of my current boyfriend at the time, generals, in videos of him releasing himself. Thank God me and my sister has my mother's Facebook password and was able to delete it. And was able to delete it before my mother ever really seen anything. Like, this how sick the situation was. And the only reason why we knew that this person sent it to my mother is because um, they were threatening to send it to everybody that he knew, including everybody that I knew. So we just started asking people and looking in DMs and inboxes and look. And after a couple of times, just asking like a couple of people that we knew, like, oh, if you just get, if somebody sends you anything, just let us know. Blah, 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 blah. Like, not saying exactly what was going on, but just saying, like, if somebody weird sends you something, don't even paint it on mine. Just kind of brushing it off. But it was just the most surreal thing. And me being so dumb, so naive, so just kind of, like, inexperienced with just relationships and how things are just supposed to go. I ended up breaking up with him and then taking him back a week later after he came to my house dropped down on all fours and was just begging me begging me crying snot everything to come back and he's so sorry and please believe him it was a catfish they he did not know this person was what they were so forth and so on stupidly i accepted his apology and took him back so we go on um continue having a relationship um things from that point wasn't too off like i quickly forgave him even in Internally, I quickly forgave him and didn't really bring it up, um, but still had those underlining feelings of this person is something else to him that is not just a heterosexual man. Mm. So that was in 2018. Fast forward to um, 2020, we're in full blown pandemic mode. Like the world shut down. Our anniversary was coming up. He started to display certain behaviors that triggered me of this time before of when becoming very defensive very reclusive, not saying much, not really want to talk, can't really look me in my eyes. So it just, it, it triggered me so much. I start like, my head starts spinning like, not again, not again. That Those are my thoughts. I have a very close friend. My close friend is the girlfriend of his best friend. I start confiding in her that, girl, that things feel very familiar. I feel like he's cheating on me again. And I say it to her, plain as day. No, I don't think so. I think he learned his lesson. You know, like, her, she just being a friend. Like, she just being a friend and trying to ease my mind and ease the thoughts that I'm having. Right. So she's trying to ease my feelings and my thoughts. And I'm just simply telling her, like, girl, I've been here. It looks way too familiar. I think that he is cheating on me again. So now that is, I'm having this conversation with her um, late March like I told you, we got together in April, so our anniversary is approaching. My family um, makes us a huge seafood boil, knows that we both love seafood boils, spends all day, my mom, my sister buy us presents. Now, mind you, we went two years prior, we went through this whole ordeal, and they know everything that I went through with this man, and still, they just supported me with taking this man back and just... If that's what you want to do, we support you. And still treating him like a, basically a son-in-law and a brother-in-law. So he got us gifts. I get a text. So now I'm texting him like, hey, um, everything's ready. Just let me know um, if you're making your way or whatever the case may be. I'm about to go in the shower. So just call me if you need me. So after I get out the shower, I see a, a, a lengthy text that he sends me. And tells me that he he cheated on me again. And he spent the day at the doctor. When he told me he was at work. He spent the day at the doctor to go get tested. Because this person said that he should go get tested. It's our anniversary. My family is in the living room. Making us our anniversary dinner. And wrapping our gifts for our anniversary. 
I'm in the bathroom now bawling because he sends me this message. So I dry myself off. I go and put on some clothes and I do the best that I can at composing myself. And he sends another text message and says that he's outside in my staircase and can I come out and talk to him. So I put on a good face for my family and tell them, hey, he's outside. I'm just gonna go meet up with him real quick. Um, and I'll be right back. They think nothing of it. I go outside and I immediately see him and he has the same sad puppy dog face that he did the last go around. And I'm just looking at him in pure disgust because the amount of um, healing it took from that last situation in totality as as far as him getting back in my family remotely their good graces it was just like how could you put us back at this point right he proceeds to tell me that he met this person this girl on the train from the train they had a conversation that conversation led them to go to her car and when they went to her car the girl gives him a hand job and jerks him but he thought he caught something from that because she spit on her hand to give it to him so now at this point i'm a little bit older and you're not gonna no that don't make sense so y'all went from her train to her car and you was able just to meet this girl off a of whim so quickly that you felt comfortable we were just going back to her her car and getting a hand job and then from that hand job you thought that you caught something to go to the doctor all day that don't make sense so i told him like no and after after that i said my family spent all day doing this you're not gonna ruin this for for me and for them you're gonna go in here and we're just gonna act like everything is okay we're gonna have our dinner we're gonna open up our gifts and we're gonna talk about this later tonight when everybody else goes to sleep or when everybody else sleeps stay tuned for part three because when i tell you this shit is beyond me and yes i'm dumb i'm stupid for staying for seven years when at this point this was only year four part four or of how I was in a seven-year relationship with a man who was very questionable and suspect, 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 suspect. So we are now um, eating the dinner that my family prepared for us, opening our gifts, doing the best we could with keeping a, a good face and acting like nothing's wrong. And he's doing everything in his power. Like he's doing the dishes. He's picking up everybody's plate. Like he's being super attentive. And my family is kind of like, no, you don't have to. It's your anniversary. And he's insisting that he he does this all because he knows what's going on. So fast forward, um, everybody heads out or, and everybody goes to bed. And I'm just sitting there looking at him like, like what's wrong with you? Like genuinely. So after over and over and over and over and over and over and over, I tell him this is not flying. This story makes no sense. And and you already disrespected me enough by doing this. You're not gonna continue to disrespect me by giving, giving me this half-ass story. What is this? It transpires to the whole story changing. So now the new story is that he was on Tinder. And him being on Tinder, he matched with somebody, his words, I matched with somebody and met up with them and they gave me a blow job. Okay, you met up with this person and gave you a blow job. Where did you do it at? In that car. What kind of car they drive? Jada, what, what does that matter? What is that? What does that matter? I'm asking details now. Cause like, what is like, it's just, it's, it's, it's so crazy to me that you're this comfortable with just meeting these random people. This is the second time in a row, but this is a random person Person that you're meeting on the internet and you feel the comfortability with potentially or now now you follow through so the first time you was about to the second time you actually did something with this person you cannot tell me a name i asked them what does this person look like they gave he gave me the most vague description dark skin about my height and her name was Brie. No last name. No full name. Brie. They, you, Brie. That's it. You don't. Is it Brianna? Is it Brittany? Is it Brakeisha? Like just Brie. So it's Brie. 
and nothing was making sense like it was tender so now at this point i'm actually feeling super disrespected so now i'm getting a little bit more boisterous on my opinion of what i've been feeling for the past four years now right so now i asked him i said did you did you do something with a man and i say it just like that and he just looks at me like what what it's almost like every time i confront him about something in regards to either his friend's sexuality or now i'm confronting him about potentially his it's never like this like what are you like where, like why would you even think that or it's just kind of like a like the feeling i got was like how did you figure this out so now i'm full on confronting him about it he's denying it of course he would but he's not doing anything that would prove his point i would feel like if my girl my woman is accusing me of having anything homosexual going on i would go to the ends of the earth to prove no who i met up with was a woman and i did something with a woman he wasn't doing any of that red flag on the plate I know all of this is red flags, but this is when I, I particularly at this moment, being head over heels in love with somebody was saying like, okay, okay, now red flags for sure. Any other time I was just guessing, assuming, you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like, okay, this, this is definitely something, something is going on. Now, mind you, I told you because of what was going on, the world shut down. So now I had to go find uh, a place that was willing to take me to go get tested myself. And then at that time, we didn't even know what was really going on. So I was scared to go outside. And now I'm forced to go outside because now I got to go see if I'm good. Luckily, I was I was amazing. I was good. Everything came back clean. His stuff came back and he was clean broke up now at this point when we broke up we broke up for three months we was done for three months baby baby please baby baby please baby baby please da, 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 da. same spiel over again we got back together i know y'all i know stop screaming at me stop screaming at me this is how dumb i was all of that happened in april his birthday is in september i took him on a birthday trip yeah so I took him on his birthday trip and I asked all his friends and family to send me videos of them telling him happy birthday and how much he means to them. And I made a big collage to play for him on his birthday. Yes, I know. I'm stupid. While we was out there, I did bring up everything that happened um, in April. And I told him, if you do anything remotely, even close to anything that we had um, experienced in the past, and I find out anything, we're done. We are done, okay? Done, done, okay. So for about, I wanna say two, two and a half years, things were going smooth sailing. Um, We moved in with each other. Things were becoming better, but as far as the friendships he was having, still felt very, very weird to me. Um, and he continued to make friends and get overtly close with them. So that was still an argument because now I feel the way that I feel. So now I'm side eyeing all your male friendships that you're having. And that gave me anxiety. It made me paranoid. It made me very insecure um, because not only did I feel like, okay, be as women, maybe around my man, but now I have to worry about men being around my man. Fast forward, now we moved to Atlanta. We're in Atlanta now. Things are going cool. now. I was financially stable in New York. When I came to Atlanta, I was not because I was starting my career all over again. So he started becoming the one that was a little bit more financially stable. Um, he was taking me to work. Um, just everything was going pretty cool. And then he started doing lip. So now he started to say like, oh, he had to go out a lot and make this money, driving all the time in his car, barely was home. So now being distant, being detached. So I started to see the red flags on the play again so now that i'm seeing all the red flags on the play again we're gearing up to go to part five hopefully part five is the last part because this is the straw that broke the camel's back and like i told you i told him the last time if something happened again this will be the last time and i was not playing so stay tuned for part five to see how this jackass fucked around and found out all right so part five of how i was in a seven-year relationship with a very questionable and suspect man okay let's get it so i'm just gonna rewind a smidget because i did say that 
we were good for those um, years that we lived together and we weren't. Uh, I was just referring into nothing really happening on like the cheating front, but things started to get physical between us um because like i said i was confronting him about the friend still even though there was no definitive proof of the cheating it was still very questionable about the relationships that he was having with his friends and just the comfortability of him kind of showing me like any new friend that he made it being a male that they kind of like had the one up on me a little bit that's the feeling that i got not that he was saying that but it always felt like i would go to the ends of the earth for my friends and like their birthdays or their outings but when it came to my birthdays and it came to something that i needed his support in when it came to me it was just half ass or nothing at all um so we would get into arguments that, like that and then things would become physical so I just wanted to rewind a little bit. Now we're gonna fast forward back to us swimming to Atlanta. So now we're living in Atlanta. And like I told you before, um, I was a little bit more financial, financially dependent on him. And he was using Lyft as an oh, since I'm supporting you now too, I gotta go out here, I gotta do what I gotta do, I gotta grind. So he was out majority of the day. And because his job was in his car, if I, and he did give me his location, cause that was a part of the guidelines of us getting back for the second time. He was now saying, oh, see me anywhere you know i'm doing the lift so he had excuses he had like a clear cut excuse of why he would be somewhere that was just in west bubble okay so okay so now on this particular day i'm getting ready to do make my makeup clients it's a wedding and he's being very attentive it's like he's being very attentive but very that same cold distant like every time he does something he's not supposed to do he gets like this but also being attentive so he offers to drive me there he's putting the car um he put in the bags in the car my makeup case loading it up opening my door like like doing things that very sad that he hasn't done in a long time for me um when we get to the venue he's taking my stuff out he's walking to the door um to say goodbye he gives me this long kiss and he's just being very attentive but while he's doing all of this he's not able to make eye contact with me so it's like it's very weird okay so i do um my clients to the bridal party he comes and picks me up um i give him money for gas he denies it he's like no you don't need to do that whatever the case so I'm like, sure, like, blah, 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 blah. Now, mind you, he had no problem taking my money for gas any other time. So I'm just like, okay. Um, so one of my coworkers was having a farewell party um, and invited me. So he was going to take me there. Now, I was going to Uber there because I planned on drinking or whatever the case may be. And I knew that he had to go do Lyft. He says, no, I don't have to do that. He's going to take me. So he proceeds to take me. On the way to the um, party, he asks me, have I been to the doctor lately? And I said, no. Why would I? Why? Why is nothing wrong with me? He sighs and he's doing this, these little facial expressions while he's driving. That's really peculiar to me. So I'm like, me, my smart little mom, I'm like, why? You was out here doing something? And he says yes i did um i got ahead from this person and my test results came back today and i have gonorrhea <sighs> so i'm in the passenger side and i'm just looking at him now mind you he's not taking his eyes to the road he's not looking back at me he's just looking straight ahead and i'm just looking at him we got to the destination of the party um i got out the car and i said are you able to pick me back up he says yeah and he just still no eye contact i get back in the car and i just tell him like, like how could you but i'm so calm the same way i am right now i'm just looking at him and i'm just like how could you and then we arrive back to our house and i take a shower and i lay down and he proceeds to get in the bed with me and i just burst out in tears i just burst out in tears when i tell you it was the that ugly cry that <laughs> that type of cry so i asked him how did how did this happen what did you do he goes and tells me he was on tinder again met somebody from tinder and got a blowjob and gonorrhea 
So I said to him, I said, you know what? It's so crazy how every time you do something, something always happens. Like, you don't think that's crazy? He says, yeah, like, you know, I only ever did anything those three times. And I said, okay, so you only do things three times and every time you get caught or every time something bad happens to you. So I told him in the most calm voice possible, we're done. I told you if this anything happened like this again, we will be done and it's over. He called my bluff and I said, I can give you a month to find somewhere else to go and somewhere else to live, but you are not staying here no more and we're done. He tries to talk, work it out. And I said, at this point, it's either you are doing things with men or you did something with a prostitute. Which one? This jackass says, oh, I did something with a prostitute. So I said, okay, you did something with a prostitute. How did you pay the prostitute? He tells me, oh, um, it was cash. I said, okay, so show me the transaction or where you took money out um, of your bank. He shows me a statement of when he took out $80 from a bank in Riverdale. Hmm. I said, that's very peculiar because that same bank around that same time in that same area is when you took out money to come and get my nails done. So you want to try again? He starts, I don't understand. What point are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove? And I just looked at him and I said, this is the saddest thing. This is the saddest thing. I said, you need help. And we lived with each other for a month. And in that month, I've seen him go from up and down, hot and cold. There were, it would be days he would come home and he wants to work it out. And baby, baby, please. And baby, baby, please. And then it would be days to where he treated me like shit on the bottom of his shoe. And we have a do we had a dog together. He said, I'm not doing shit for that dog. Don't actually walk it. And then he'll, it'll, it'll be days where he come in and he'll be like, does the dog need this? And does the dog need that? And I'll do this. Oh, I'm just trying to make it work. I'm just trying to, I want to get married to you. I want to have babies with you. And then he'll come the next day and, and be like, you get, you found, you find a way to get to work. I ain't taking you to work. I ain't doing nothing for you. It was that for a month. So come June 1st, I told him, you have to leave. He tried to give me another month's worth of rent i gave it back to him and i said you need to leave you need to go we are done stay tuned for part six i promise part six is gonna be the last part i'm gonna try to sum it all up okay okay so part six of how i was in a seven-year relationship with a very questionable and suspect man is gone so like i told you i gave him a month to get himself together and during that month's time he was going through every emotion known in the book treating me like he's graveling at my feet and seeing that's not working to so resorting back to treating me like complete utter shit so during that month i would hear him on the phone with the best friend the infamous best friend and I would hear sometimes the best friend saying like, yeah, bro, you better off without her. And I would let it slide. I would hear it because um, sometimes I felt like out of all the other times you were on the phone with the best friend and I could never hear your conversation even when I was trying to. Now I'm able to hear it so vividly, like almost like you want me to hear him say that. Okay. So um, initially I packed all his stuff up already when we got back from the party the day that he told me. So I packed all his stuff up. So everything was already in boxes he took the boxes from the room that we was in together to the garage and left them in the garage for the remaining um time of the month cool so um and then he was not sleeping in my um my bed he was sleeping in another room he comes one time in the room and gets in the bed as if nothing happens and proceeds to touch on me like we were about to do something i kicked him out expeditiously that pissed him off so that was close um, to the time where he was gearing up to leave. And so from that point on, he was just, it was just like in passing, walking right past each other. Cool. Um, so I get a call from his dad. His dad proceeds to tell me, oh, like, that's your man. Don't let your man go. Don't let anybody else have the satisfaction of taking your man from you. <clears throat> because no matter how bad, and this is another part, maybe in another story time, I'll tell you. But he used to throw me under the bus every chance he get to his friends, to his family. Like, did, did not give me no protection. Like, he would talk bad about me to his friends and family, um, to where they started treating me differently. And I know that because I had a conversation with his sister and all the stuff that she told me he said about me I'm like wow M majority of it was lies and for the stuff that was true he never told her the things that he did to make me react that way but because the father um 
I'm guessing he was saying that because he didn't get the full scoop. And I told him, but you know, he he got, he, he caught something. He caught gonorrhea. So he could have easily gave that to me. And now he don't care about my life and I don't feel safe. His father proceeds to tell me, but that's your man. You have to stick by your man. I hung up. No. So he leaves. Now, when he leaves, I want to say two months go by. And a month goes by the first time he tries to read out, reach out to me and tries to tell me that he wants to come back and he's going to make it work. And then he does it a second time, second month. No, both times. Not happening. I was already done. I told you the last time was going to be the last time. And I was done. I didn't feel safe with this person no more. I didn't feel like I knew this person no more. Um, it got physical. Um, my health is at risk. I don't trust you. And every time he cheated, it just got worse. And I just wasn't willing to take that chance on seeing what the next worst was because now the next time I might catch something that I cannot get rid of. Cause we're in Atlanta and I feel like you're doing what you're doing because there was never no proof of any woman in sight. I, for seven years, I was arguing with this man about men. So from certain people and through the grapevine, I find out that he is creating this whole new narrative that I just let him become homeless out into the streets and didn't care and just kicked him out. Um, and my family was way too invested in our relationship and drove a wedge between us and so forth and so on. And that was the reason that we ended. Okay. So fast forward a little bit more, I find out that he has a new girlfriend and he moves in with the girlfriend relatively pretty quickly. I understood exactly the reasoning for that. Okay, you need a place to live and you probably took the first opportunity you could get, but that was none of my business. I'm not saying that because that's any of my business. All I'm saying is this is just a warning to a lot of women. Whenever you have a gut feeling about anything about anything it doesn't have to be the man's sexuality or whatever the case may be whenever you just have a gut feeling about something just listen to it because i could have saved myself a lot of heartache a lot of embarrassment a lot of money because like i said for a majority of our relationship i was the one doing opposed to the first couple dates that he took me on to i guess now to what i know to be love bombing and then his real colors came out. All I'm saying is, please, please, when you see something that doesn't sit right with your soul or you feel something that doesn't feel right with your soul, run. So, more of the story. Like I said, gut feeling, listen to it. Um, And if you're in a relationship that's getting way too toxic and you just have this feeling like, oh, but what if everything that I taught him, he goes and treats the next woman better than me? That may be true and it may not be true but you will not have to go through the same trauma and, and heartbreak that you've been going through like let let the next woman handle that let the next woman go through that let the next woman see whatever she needs to see or let the next woman make him better whatever the case may be but just worry about yourself and worry about getting yourself out of this toxic relationship i may do other parts of other aspects of um this relationship but as far as the dl stuff for me he's not beating these allegations because for seven years and you knowingly cheated on me three times you got caught and there has never been any proof of a woman being involved we have to talk about that like that has to that has to count for something so yes watch out because you don't really have to worry about the women now you have to worry about the man taking your man so thank you for listening to my TED talk oh child that's a lot <laughs> i mean a lot a lot penitentiary a lot see you have the right to do whatever you want to do but not when you're with me not when doing you puts me at risk not when you made a commitment to someone to love honor and cherish them not when we're on this journey of forever together. But you just went and switched lanes without notice. You went on a high speed chase in the opposite direction with me with you. And I'm just supposed to crash and burn on purpose by accident? <laughs> I know you lying. Drop in the comments and let me know what you would do. How you would handle this situation. Would it have taken you seven years to tell him the door? But that's why you have to know the type of ship you're on. And who you're on that ship with. So that brings us to our Wellness Waves Wednesdays. Topic for the next few weeks. Managing your ship. Because you 
you have to pay attention to a ship for it to run right. And you have to make sure you have the right people on that ship. If you're trying to navigate right and your shipmate is trying to navigate left, how are you going to make it to your destination? You will remain stuck in limbo, going nowhere and accomplishing nothing, but time will keep moving. And after a while, you'll notice you are still in the same place, singing the same song. Let's get into it. So we just finished our Escaping the Heartbreak Hotel series, and we learned tools to help us escape heartbreak, loneliness, anger, self-loathing, depression, and anxiety. Things that are plaguing our society today because somehow we've forgotten how to cope. Yeah. We've taught the people that being empowered is not accepting no as an answer, but we forgot to teach them how to deal with it when no is the answer. See, in my day, God, I'm starting to sound like my mom. Who the thunk it that we see the day where our parents' sayings are starting to make sense? <laughs> but we see it every day. Several times a day with boyfriends unaliving girlfriends and girlfriends unaliving boyfriends and parents unaliving children, children unaliving parents. It's like the world is one big giant investigation discovery series and you don't know when or where the next episode is going to premiere and no one's paying attention to the sign. Everybody's raging. Just a bunch of David Banners transforming into hoax all over the world and leaving destruction in their wake. Just death and destruction due to unbridled anger and rage. No one knows how to process their emotions, so they just lash out on the first thing close to them. Do you know how many chats I've been in where I see people saying they're depressed? They've reached a breaking point. They don't know what to do. And I just want to tell them, come over to Champagne Secrets. We have a whole section devoted to helping you. I tell my business to help you understand your but it's someone else's chat and I don't want to promote myself in someone else's space but the level of hopelessness that I see is heartbreaking but somehow over the years we've lost something resilience the ability to bounce back shake it off and keep moving forward it's like we've dropped an anchor right in the middle of turbulent waters and said I'm tired I don't want to go back and I don't want to move forward. What do you do when you're too afraid to go forward, but you're too scared to turn back? Baby, that's when you look to the hills from whence cometh your help. You focus inward instead of outward. Sometimes you have to put on spiritual blinders to block out what's going on around you so you can focus on what's ahead. And as we concluded with the Heartbreak Hotel, we learned that a major part of escaping is accountability. Sometimes we're stuck because we're so busy pointing the finger at others that we don't take the time out to assess where we went wrong. And sometimes where we went wrong is not taking the escape route when we saw the road road we were on was headed toward danger. We stayed longer than we should have. Uh -huh. But today, as stated last week, we're setting sail on the high seas of relationship, friendship, companionship, all the shit. <laughs> That's right. We're diving into the world of managing your ship because every relationship, whether intimate or just friends, is just like a ship. And how we navigate it can make all of the difference. So do you have your pencils ready? Note time. Remember this. A relationship is two people on a ship learning to relate. And today we're breaking down the anatomy of a ship to understand our relationships better. So are you ready to set sail? <laughs> Let's go. Two people, not a multitude. Two. Because I can only have a relationship with one person at a time. Watch this. Even if I have a friend group, right? And let's say there are four people in that group. I can't have a relationship with all four people equally. There's going to be a difference in how I relate to each of them, even though I have a relationship with all of them. That's why you have contentions in friend groups. You spend more time with them than me. Maybe it's because my relationship with them, how I relate to them is 
different from how I relate to you. So it will never be the same. Get it? You give an individual the part of you that relates to them. If a person wants to know how to swim, I'm a swimmer. I don't know where they get that black people don't swim from. Do. I'm just not getting in the ocean unless I'm on a ship. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm not playing with God's creatures in that water. I'm not. And if you've watched my secret obsessions, then you know I love them. I love sharks on the TV, not in person. But if you ask me to teach you to swim, I'm not going to take you to the club because that's not the part of me that relates to you. Get it? But see, we want to make everybody relate in every area. And then we're hurt when they don't measure up to our expectations for the space we put them in. But that's because we don't take the time out to get to know who we are climbing on the ship with. If you can't swim, then I know not to take you to a diving board in 10 feet deep water because you aren't equipped to handle it. And even though I can swim, I'm not equipped to save you once you start drowning. That's why you have to know who you're getting on a ship with. So we're going to be breaking down the anatomy of a ship to help you better understand your ship. Now this is going to be an introduction to what we're going to be discussing over the next several weeks. I'm not going to go into full depth on this week because we'll be here for another hour, baby. <laughs> so if you know someone who's struggling with their relationships, companionships, friendships, situationships, whatever the ship may be, tell them to pull up, grab a seat, and let's set sail together because we're going to be discussing the parts of the ship and how it relates to your ship. We'll be discussing the hull, the foundation of your relationship. What is your relationship built on? Then we'll be discussing the deck. How are your everyday interactions with each other? We'll discuss the mast. What are your shared aspirations? Have you even discussed them with your significant other? The sales, communication and effort. Ooh, that's a cuss word to some of y'all. Communication. How are you communicating? The anchor, stability and security. It has to do with more than just money. The rudder, guidance and direction. Who or what is guiding and directing you? Your action, your choice and your behavior. The bow. The bow is in the front. It faces forward. What does your forward motion look like? The stern. It's in the back. Your past and your foundation. Are you living in the past? Spending so much time focused on the past that you can't move forward? The cabin. Your private space. Your intimate area. How is your intimacy? Quality time. The compass. Your values and principles. What direction are you trying to take? The life Lifeboat. Do you have a backup plan and support system set up in case something goes wrong? Then we're going to get into setting sail. How do you begin your journey? The crew. Building a strong support system. No ship can operate without a crew. Navigating stormy seas. How do you handle conflict? As conflict will arise. The anchor. The stability and grounding. What grounds you? What grounds your relationship? What holds it in play? What keeps it steady? Maintenance and repairs. What are you doing to keep your ship in tip top shape? Celebrating milestones. Do you take the time to celebrate accomplishments? together? Are you enjoying the journey? Because it's more than just getting to a destination. Docking in safe harbor. Are you finding comfort and safety in each other, in those that you are surrounded by? Is your ship safe in the harbors that you frequent? Exploring new horizons, growing together. Are you growing together? Are you growing apart? Or are you attempting to grow separately? All of these things matter when you're talking about getting into something like Chrisette Michelle said, a couple of forever. <laughs> but first, we're going to spend some time figuring out how well do you know the individuals you are surrounded by, the individuals that you're trying to get on a ship with. How well do you know them? Because one of the biggest issues that we have in relationships, whether it's a friendship or whatever, is we don't take the time out to get to know the individuals we allow into our space. We so surface level, but your peace 
should be so important that anyone you allow into your space, you need to sit back and figure out what they're about. Are we going in the same direction? Are we equally yoked? Because you know when the Bible says don't get unequally yoked with an unbeliever, somehow we think that just means someone who's saved with someone unsaved. But do you not understand that if you are in a relationship with someone and the two of you are not going in the same direction, that's unequally yoked as well? How can two walk together except they agree? And how can you fully agree with someone you don't know? So we're going to get into it. Yes, we are. I hope you enjoyed this week's crossover episode, Merging Wellness Waves Wednesdays with the X-Files Exposed. And I think for the remainder of this series, that's what I'm going to do. Probably with shorter story time. So we have enough time to help you manage your ship. But as I always state, there's a life lesson in everything. So since we're talking about managing your ship, why not use some of these story times to help us manage it? So drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this week's episode. I hope you are excited about this new series. Like I said, if you know anyone who's struggling in their relationships, no matter what that shit may be, tell them to pull up next week. 10 p.m. is when I usually release these. So 10 p.m. next week. Do me a favor and consider hitting that like button for me. Consider joining the Champagne Gang and the Fizz Fam. Become a confidant. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever sector we jump into for another show. And until next time, confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses clink and let's drink till we meet again ta-ta